the biggest issue that any business is going to face, I suppose, is the growth and dealing with growth. And once they've gotten there, there's other problems that they face, but I suppose every business goes through stages and at every stage, it's going to have its, its own problems and its own uh, issues that it's got to deal with. Typically what we find with uh, businesses uh, when they're first starting to grow, so they've gone from the position of being the only person that's working the business to where they've put on employees, or well, the first employee will be the second employee. One of the issues that they raise is, I used to know how to do all of this myself, and now I'm teaching my employees how to do it, therefore I could have been earning money while I'm doing this, but I'm not, and I'm wasting my time teaching other people how to do it. So it becomes very, very apparent that they haven't got processes in place. I suppose a smart business owner is going to look at getting as much of that documented as possible because you don't want to have to keep on repeating and repeating. There's many businesses that may have put on the first person, they haven't documented things, that person doesn't work out for whatever reason, they move on, then they're spending their time over and over again retraining people, whereas the process could have been simplified far easier if they'd actually had things documented, whether they'd done videos, whether they'd done um, slideshows, or whatever it might be, in order to be able to sort of say, right, here's a general overview of what we need to do, here's a, a, what I've written up and what we need to do procedural-wise, please follow that and come and see me when you've done this. It's not all about the accounting side of it, we're also asking, well, what do you do for this? How do you do it? What time are you doing this? And where have you got it documented? Because there's a lot of people that might be saying, well, I do this, like this, like this, and like this. But that's where we'd actually question and sort of say, well, if you're doing it like that, that sounds like a lot of hard work. Have you thought about doing it this way? Because this way is actually going to make make it a bit str more streamlined. And whilst you're doing it that way, how have you, what have you got as far as a system to process or to, to document what we're doing because you want to be able to leverage, you want, you want to be able to push this work down. This is not work that you should be doing. Is your time best spent doing this function in the business or is it best spent doing what you enjoy doing and what you went into business for, which is generating money? Capital becomes important because when you say, all right, I'm going to put on an employee, it's not very often that you're going to put on an employee and it doesn't entail other costs. Say for instance, if you're a tradesman and you say, all right, well, I'm going to put on an apprentice. Are you going to be providing the apprentice with any tools? Are you going to be providing him with any training? What is that cost going to be to you? Have you considered you're going to be paying superannuation? You're going to be withholding taxes? So there's a whole process around that. So you might have to have payroll system implemented and so there's a lot of things as far as capital and cash flow that you need to be wary of even if you're going to be saying in an office environment like ourselves if we're going to be saying well, we want to increase our headcount by two people or well, we've got to then make allowances to say all right well those two people are going to have to have a workstation to sit at they've got to have to have computers we're going to have to have logins for all of the platforms you use all of those things there come at a cost so all of these things need to be factored into when you're going to be saying I'm going to be putting increase in my headcount. A lot of people actually don't realise when they're going to need people. And a lot of the times when we're sitting down doing a blueprint with our clients, we'll sort of say, all right, well, in 12 months time, what do you see your revenue generation will be? And at what point do you see that you're going to be putting employees on? Because if we can identify and get the client to actually start to think, all right, now, if I'm going to hit this target with my revenue, uh, and I hit the next target, well that's going to be probably the point where I can't do all this work. Now it's pointless getting an employee on when you're at the point where you're drowning with work because that's not going to do you any good. But if you can actually plan it to sort of say, alright, well I know that at this point here I'm going to have too much work, so maybe a month or two months beforehand I'm going to have to staff up. Then if that staff, if I'm going to be putting on say a staff member on in January, what's that going to mean? Am I going to have to provide them with a vehicle? So therefore, do I need to factor in the cost of a vehicle? Am I going to be providing them with tools? Well, I need to factor that in as well in order to make sure that once you've actually committed to all of these things here, that you've got a plan on how you're going to make the money and actually have the cash flow to be able to pay for them all. The tax component of putting on employees is always going to be something that needs to be considered depending upon the industry. You've got to make sure that A, your insurances are up to date, so you've got the workers' compensation insurance covered. Now, depending upon the industry that you're in, that can actually get quite expensive. You've got to make sure that you're meeting your superannuation obligations. Now, typically a lot of empl uh, empl uh, employers will opt to say, I will pay it quarterly. Okay, but uh, from my experience, 
I've always found that it's be you're better off to pay stuff like that monthly because you don't allow it to accumulate to be a large amount of money. You're applying it to where it should be before you've actually spent it in your business. Then there's the POYG withholding. So every every employer has an obligation to withhold tax from their employees and the, the tax office is actually getting far harder with how they're treating uh, any digressions within this area. So you've got to make sure that you've, when you've paid the net wages to the employee that you haven't spent his tax on fund, either funding your lifestyle or funding the people that won't pay you uh, to keep the business running, you've got to make sure that it's either set aside um, or put in a separate account or paid directly to the tax office in order to make sure that you've got the money there to meet your liabilities. And then also you've got to be mindful that um, the employee's not going to be working for you for 12 months. You've actually got to give them four weeks annual leave and you've got to be, be, be able to provide to say, well, I'm going to have to pay this person four weeks annual leave uh, 10 days sick leave, 10 days carers leave, whatever it may be, in order to keep to meet my own requirements or meet the legislative requirements. And this is all money that's going out, but this is while they're not generating money while they're working for you. If we're going to sit down and say, let's resolve everything in one hit, people are going to be walking out thinking, what just hit me? I can understand with a lot of business people, it's too much. So the reality would be that uh, we have a relationship with our clients that they'll trust us to say, all right, look, we'll set up the payroll for you and this is how it's going to be. And we're going to automate it as much as possible because we want you to not worry about this part of the business. Your concern should really be making sure that you're bringing the money in because if you don't do that, that's when we're going to have problems with this side of the business. If we can help the client actually focus their own um, actions towards something that's going to be of benefit to the business, then we can help them resolve everything else, whether it's putting systems in place, just letting them know what their liabilities are as they're coming up or well before they've come up in order so they can be aware of it. Whether it's helping people achieve their goals through business, whether it's helping somebody that's hurt themselves, uh, whether it's helping an old lady across the road, it's simply about helping. If your aim is to take, not to give, well, it's not the right thing in the world. But more importantly, it's good to help those people that appreciate the help and will help others as well. Because it's not about, this world is big enough and there's a lot of business out there for everybody without trying to get the jump on your competition or trying to outwit your competition. There's, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm belief that if you help somebody, karma will repay itself and it'll help you.